Well, it's something that we all hold very dear. It's a major part of our health for our entire lives. But not everyone or every child is able to keep up with this vital necessity. I'm Reba Tony. This is Join Our Town. Today, we are talking with Liz Bear and Dr. Richard Mungo about your child's dental health. Thank you so much for being here. Great Thank to be you, here. Reba. Okay, so um, I, I love the program, Healthy Smiles for Kids in Orange County, because that's exactly what we want, right? Exactly. But not having those healthy smiles, it's not even just about being able to smile. Uh, doctor, tell me about what not having good teeth, how that impacts a child's health. Well, Reba, what we're really the far-reaching problems, uh, what we have to realize is the fact that our oral health is very much part of our overall health. Mm. And somehow a long history here, things got separated and we think of dental and medical, but it's all the same. Well, it's separated on my insurance card. It is. And <laughs> <it's true. laughs> And the problem with that is that we don't think about all of the other problems and the aspects of their lives. For infants, it's all about feeding. Mm. It's all about learning how to talk. It's all about being comfortable and thriving. And when you have oral pain, oral infection, you can't eat properly, it's a real problem for children that are infants that are grown. Mm -hmm. When you're a child, and now we start talking about going to school, pre-K, kindergarten, and that, then it's always about getting the proper nutrition in the morning. If you have infections in your mouth and pain in your mouth, you don't wake up happy, you don't have a good night's sleep, mm -hmm. you don't eat a good nutritious breakfast. Mm -hmm. By the time you get to school, you're not concentrating on school no or your teacher. You're concentrating on the oral pain. Mm -hmm. So your teeth have a big effect on speech development, eating, self-awareness. Well, it's, and it's funny that you say that because um, I, I know a lot of people will think, oh, they're just baby teeth. It doesn't matter. But you're saying it can affect what they're eating and even their education. Exactly. Exactly. In the United States, on a yearly basis, 1.5 million days of school are lost because of oral pain. Wow. We always think in terms of, for instance, asthma, number one mm -hmm. chronic ailment of children that keeps them out of school. Actually, it's number two. Asthma is number two. Oral pain, oral infection, cavities, uh -huh. simple cavities are number one. And they're five times more prevalent a problem than asthma. That's number one. And right here in Santa Ana, we've estimated that in the Santa Ana Unified School District, mm -hmm. that's a half million dollars that's lost to that school district because of children that can't come. Wow. And it's a loss to the community and it's a loss to the children. Exactly. And so often many parents don't realize what they can do and how we can treat it. And it's not specific to one area, it's children across the board. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that we're trying to reach out is make the fact that this epidemic is going on. Here in Orange County, one in three children in the areas that we screen have untreated visible decay. I'm not a dentist, I'm on the business side, mm -hmm. but you or I could look into a child's mouth and if we looked, we could see that. We, we would be able to just visually tell. Yes. Well, you know, I'm imagining if, um, even if you have a, a nice house or a nice car, you know, with the economy the way it is, if you're contemplating, okay, am I making this mortgage payment or am I concentrating on my health? A lot of people might even choose their health, but they might not think that the dental is part of that. Exactly. And when you're losing all of that, you're losing your insurance. And so they're really, there's an economic factor here. They can't afford to go, even mm -hmm. if they wanted to. But it's, it, it really reaches down also into the educational part of really making people aware of how important oral health is mm -hmm. and how that affects our children. And when people are aware of that, sometimes their priorities change appropriately. Liz, tell me how Healthy Smiles for kids in Orange County, how they work and, and how they uh, maneuver through the community. Absolutely. We were founded because the founder was very concerned about children who weren't able to stay in school because of these issues. Mm -hmm. And we found that children, particularly without insurance, were not able to get care. So we were created to help those kids that were most underserved. But we weren't created just to treat. We were also created to do prevention and education. Mm -hmm. So we have a fixed site clinic in Garden Grove and we have a referral line. So parents can call if they're looking for a dentist or they're not quite sure what they need to do. We also have a tooth fairy center where there's age appropriate sinks and stalls for kids to come in and learn how long do I need to brush my teeth. Mm -hmm. Flossing is important. And to try to educate not just the children, but parents. 
because for the very young, they can't do that. So we do education throughout the county. We have two mobiles, and that's what we're most excited about. Mm -hmm. It's our 10th anniversary, and through a generous gift, Pacific Life, we now have a second mobile that will be going out into South County, and we're trying to get the word out that we are out in the community, we're at schools, we're at women's and children's centers, um, trying to get kids to come out and be screened. I love that you were founded on um, what we were just talking about, and it's all of these days that these kids' lives are being impacted by poor oral health. I mean, here they are. Um, the, the parents the parents don't want their children to suffer. If the child had a fever, they would take them to the doctor. If the child were missing school for any other reason, the parent would think, I've got to do something. I've got to do whatever I can. But with oral health, for some reason, we just don't see the same sense of urgency. But if it's the number one reason our kids are missing school and are having days where they're at home in pain, it seems like it should be number one on our list. Well, and you know, it's silent. As a mom, I'm a mother of three children, one of whom goes to school in Santa Ana and one who's down two in South County. I did not know how important regular preventive checkups were. And I'm an educated, committed mom, but I didn't know, for example, we all kind of know you can tie your shoes when you're about kindergarten age, mm -hmm. but I didn't know that you can't really brush your teeth, you don't have the manipulation until you're eight. So the until parental eight. involvement is really important, but most of us parents don't get that education. And Dr. Mungo sees folks like that in the so, office. So, Doctor, all the time. we're supposed to be brushing our kids' teeth till they're eight. Yes, it surprises everybody every time we talk about it. If we stop to think that brushing your teeth is really takes a lot of manipulation, a lot of concentration. If you think about it, there are many surfaces you have to hit, mm -hmm. and so to expect a three, a four, or a five, a seven, or even an eight-year-old to take the time to get all those surfaces, to have the the attention span to do that, um, it's asking a lot. So really, as parents, until they're about eight years old, we really do have to assist them. Wow, and we're going to talk more about that in the next segment, about how we can learn to, um, to really make sure that all this happens at home and what we can do at home. Um, I want to get back to your mobile unit. Where does it go? What days? How do people know there are ice cream bells that we know it's coming? How do we know? We have been very fortunate. We've had good working relationships with the school districts. So currently, the first mobile that we had works mostly in central and northern Orange County. Okay. The second mobile that has just started operation is going to be focused in South County. So we coordinate through schools. There used to be a state-funded program that would support school-based screenings, and that funding went away in 2010. Mm -hmm. Healthy Smiles was very fortunate to be able to partner with some other collaboratives and to be able to continue to provide those screening services. So we'll go into a school, we'll screen all two, three, four hundred children in wow. that elementary school. Wow. We identify who needs additional prevention treatments uh -huh. and then we come back and take care of those kids. Okay, wait a minute. So you go in the first time and screen Doctor, do you go do the screenings? Is it a nurse that does the screening? We have we have a lot of doctors that are hired at Healthy Smiles, are part of our faculty and our, mm -hmm. our staff. And uh, we also have a residency program. We're connected oh, with Chalk Children's Hospital uh -huh. and USC School of Dentistry. Mm -hmm. And so we train dentists to be pediatric dentists because mm -hmm. that's one of the other problems. It's all about access to care, too, mm -hmm. and not having enough people here in Orange County to take care of the need. And so our residents and our dental students and hygienists and, and uh, registered dental assistants, we all go out with the vans and uh, do the screenings and try to, to establish the, the level of, of problem in that particular child in that school. Tell me about a child that you've seen where you just couldn't believe it. You know, we had a child a few years back that was just the sweetest little girl in the world. Mm. She was seven years old. Uh, first grade had been held back a year because she wasn't performing well in school and uh, it was a school nurse actually that sent her to us and we evaluated we had gone out to that school but for some reason we didn't get to see her on that day hmm. but the school nurse knew we were there she saw the van she saw you know healthy smiles she finally had a resource so she called us we immediately had her come up to Garden Grove we saw her at our smile center and I, I can't describe how bad it was. You, you, it was just hard to believe. And she just had, she had infections and oh, things that, that no. you just would not want your poor baby to, to have to experience. A seven-year-old, and that's probably why yeah. she wasn't functioning in school. Exactly. And, and she, just, she just couldn't function at all. Because she's seven years old, you can't expect her to sit in a dental chair and say, you know, go ahead, doctor, fix me. Right. Um, so we had to use uh, some sedation to get mm -hmm. her comfortable, make it a pleasant experience. Uh, it took two or three visits. Mm -hmm. She did fine, thrived well. We kept in touch with her to make sure we saw mm -hmm. her back to make sure that, you know, we had talks with mom and mm -hmm. the whole family. Mom and grandma, 
because one of the reasons for all of these, this decay had a lot to do with diet. Really? And a lot of things that the poor baby was getting to eat as mm -hmm. snacks and that. And so that's part of our educational process. Change that paradigm. Mm -hmm. Get mom and the family to realize that it's not just brushing. It really is diet brushing. Mm -hmm. Be aware of all these problems. In any rate, make a long story short, about three months later, we were called up to come to the school. And we really didn't know why. We were just, come to school, we'll come. And on the stage, they pulled us up on the stage, and two or three of us that were there, they made us their school heroes. This little girl's grades had gone up. She was Aww. so much happier, and mom was pleased, and it, it, was, it was heartwarming for us to see the, the change. And the kids are clapping about all this. This was like a big, big deal for the whole school. They used to so vill much. villainize going to the dentist, and now a dental story is bringing tears to my <laughs> eyes. Um, that is so sweet. I, I just imagine at that young age, this little girl who's had, I mean, we can only imagine how much dental pain she's been in for years. And, and sometimes it relieved. starts so early, they're not even aware. We had about three weeks ago in the clinic an 18 month old who had three cavities and two root canals. Now, you know what it's like to have a cavity. Old. And so she had to have a series of things done. Again, it was the specialty services. But what we're I trying mean, to do. How many teeth do they have at 18 months old? They have all. <laughs> well, they have 18. 18? 18? Okay. But still. That's wow. a third of your mouth. Now, she's obviously had this decay for a while, but because they're a child, they can't talk, they don't know. So what's happened oftentimes is a parent will only take their child to the dentist when they feel pain. And so part of the message we're trying to get out is the value of regular checkups mm. so that you can go and get those things taken care of before it starts. Before it starts. And your mobile units are going out, doing the screenings, and then coming back and they actually do the procedures in the mobile unit the second time, or they okay. recommend... They do the procedures in the... Pre we do a combination. Part mm -hmm. of what we're trying to do is connect people with community clinics in their areas. So if we're out screening in an area and there's another clinic, we will refer that to local so that they can okay. get a dental home and we yeah. can hook that family so up with a place to go. But we do do treatments on the dental, um, on the mobile mm -hmm. van as well. I usually pick a dentist that's closest to my house, so I'll go. Like a gym. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm like, if I can't drive by it on my way home, I might not go. Well, we need to make it easy, and that's why the yeah. mobile is so important, because we're able to get out into communities where some folks are, because transportation is an issue for many. Yeah, and taking time off of work or um, exactly. the other responsibilities so closer, I could see how, in the mobile unit. Um, you guys have events. I want to touch on that before we get into the next segment about um, home care. What, what events do we have coming up? Oh, we're very excited. We have an annual event uh -huh. where we recognize leaders in oral health care. Because again, as we've talked about, it's such a small part, people don't realize how important it is. So at this annual event, we recognize people who've been helping in the community to bring awareness to the issue, mm. who've helped make things happen. So coming up February 27th mm -hmm. is our Leaders in Oral Health event, where we're going to be honoring not only the people that started our organization, because 10 years is quite a marker to accomplish this far. So we're going to be kind of setting the stage, thanking the people that have helped us get there, mm -hmm. the Children's and Family Commission, which is the Prop 10 tobacco tax dollars that come through, as well as Pacific Life, our founding board members, and this collaborative pediatric clinics I mentioned, mm -hmm. these groups that refer, that are trying to improve the system of access to care for students. So that's all happening. Um, yeah, we need champions of, um, of oral health, as well as the people that are on the front lines making it happen. And, mm -hmm. uh, and of course, parents, you at home, you are part of our champions, making sure that our children um, have good oral health. We're going to talk about how you can be a part of that when we come back. It's your nature. Explore. Do you see? Be a tree. Really stretch. Make a sketch. Give some care, laugh and share. Dig down deep, take a leap. See what's new, see it's true. Nature's gifts wait for you. Gifts to feel, touch and more. It's your nature, explore. For the children in your life, visit Nature Explore at arborday.org. Many young people today feel as if they don't matter and that their future prospects are limited. As a nation, we need to invest in our young people, let them know that they are full of potential, 
Now let's help them succeed, and mentoring can do that. Mentors can help young people build confidence and give them hope for the future. So you can help your country by volunteering as a mentor to a young person in your community. And you'll be surprised how good it will make you feel. Mentoring works. Become a mentor. It's more than just a pretty face. It is a, a pivotal part of your health and the health of your children. We're talking about dental health um, with Healthy Smiles for Kids of Orange County, a mobile unit, a couple of mobile units, um, and an office in um, Garden Grove. And with Liz and Dr. Mungo, who can really share with you how you're the first line of defense in your children's health. What, what, where are we dropping the ball other than, I mean, we just, we just spoke about um, actually getting our kids to the dentist, but what's going on with them that they all need? I mean, are, aren't our teeth designed to last us mm. even through the first couple of years of our life? Why are, they, <laughs> why are they plunking out on us here? What's happening? Well, when they were designed a long time ago. <laughs> uh, I know the designer. <laughs> you know the designer. <laughs> and I'm not sure the designer was thinking of fruit roll-ups or different types of candies and things that are really an assault on our, our teeth. Mm -hmm. and, and it really is a battle. You know, when we, when we look at advertisements on television, and what people feel is the norm for them to give their children for snacks and for eating and all. Mm -hmm. You know, there were, when, when hamburgers and french fries became the norm and a soft drink with that, mm. who would think about it, a soft drink for dinner? But people do. Yeah. You know, we were brought up to have milk. But, we had sweet you know, tea. Yeah, Which is probably mm -hmm. very similar Same to a soft drink. So, so part of that battle is educating families early on mm -hmm. as to what to feed their children, how to feed them. Um, when, it's, when we start about, well, where, did, where does this all start with a family? It really starts with the mother mm -hmm. and the father. So many studies have showed that if a mother, while she's going through pregnancy mm -hmm. and has that baby and that, really is important prior to that to make sure that her, or her oral health is good. Really? Because the first time you and I kiss our babies, we share with them everything that we have of our own mouth. So if we have periodontal or gum disease, uh -huh. we're going to share it with the baby. Wow. And that overload of bacteria mm -hmm. is what starts the ball rolling. And they don't have the defenses. Right. Exactly. And there's myths out there. There's a myth out there that when you're pregnant, you can't see a dentist. It's absolutely what? wrong. I've never heard that. Mm -hmm. I've heard you can't bleach your hair, <laughs> but I didn't hear that you can't see a dentist. Yeah. You can see a dentist when you're pregnant. Absolutely. And you probably you should. To. You absolutely should. I They're sucking all the calcium out of you. Is that a myth too? Yeah. <laughs> 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 but it is true. Prevention is what it's all about. And so... <clears throat> If you're going, if the mom is going to the dentist, the dentist is, is professional. He's going to know what he should, he or she should do and mm -hmm. shouldn't do while you're pregnant. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to overload with x-rays and things like that. But right. normal cleanings, checking things before they get out of it's nine mm -hmm. months, a long time, mm -hmm. things can get out of hand. You don't want to be sharing all this with your baby. And so... And so you're it is be too, you might be too busy after you have the baby to think about it. <laughs> exactly. You're too, too tired to go. Um, so it's important that mom has good oral health mm -hmm. and the dad has good oral health. Um, it's important to know that when today's world, where mom is a professional, dad's a professional, they're both working, well, shortly, everybody's back to work. And now we have a nanny or we have grandma and grandpa taking mm -hmm. care of the baby. It's important that they are aware of what we should be giving our babies and not. So education goes towards beyond the immediate family. It's the caretakers. So the food, the food and um, the health of the, the initial caretakers are the initial breakdown and we spoke earlier about an 18-month-old who had to have three root canals. Mm. You know, and it's interesting, as a mom, you hear breastfeeding is the way to go. I was so proud I was breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. But nobody ever said to me, oh, don't let your baby fall asleep right there resting, because I was doing the best thing I could mm -hmm. for my baby, right? Mm -hmm. Then I met Dr. Mungo, and it's amazing. Now I know why my youngest child has more cavities than her older brothers. So whether it's breast milk or if it's um, just milk formula. from the store, mm -hmm. formula, um, they, they shouldn't be sleeping with the milk right. in their mouth. What, what happens is, and of course, obviously, at 2 in the morning, and a baby wakes up, and you know, we have a granddaughter now, and, you know, and, and I'm sure my daughter's going through that now. At 2 o'clock in the morning, you feed her a little bit, that's fine. But what we need to know is that the first thing in the morning when the baby's awake is to wash those teeth, wipe those little teeth, even mm -hmm. if there's only two of them in there, mm -hmm. and especially behind the front teeth, because that's where the decay will start. Okay. When, when the nipple is in there from a breast or a bottle, mm -hmm. that's where the milk is it's deposited. behind those teeth. Right. And they fall asleep 
Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you know, you know yourself at night sometimes you might get up and take a little water because you're dry. Mm -hmm. When your sal salivary flow, the flow of all your saliva slows down when you're asleep. So this milk will just cake onto these teeth. And by 18 months of age, we're going to Chalk Children's Hospital or in our Smile Center in Garden Grove, mm -hmm. and the anesthesiologists have to help us by putting the children to sleep so we can fix them. Wow, that's so young to have uh, dental problems like that. Well, and even sharing, you know, we always say don't share drinks, don't do mm -hmm. those things. I mean, a busy mom, pacifier drops, you pick it up, you wash it yourself and put it in. I'm transferring the germs right there. Mm -hmm. I'm making my baby sick by doing that. Now, there's dental germs that we can be giving to our children, or if they're sharing with other kids, dental germs, because, you know, you don't want them to get sick with a cold or the flu. But I didn't realize that there were... That there were things that could attack your dental health? Well, it's, it's the same bacteria. The normal flora of bacteria that we have in our mouths mm -hmm. is just the abundance of it. And so when a mom is giving a load of this bacteria to the, to the baby, it just really accelerates things to a, a much faster rate, which overcomes the, the ability to, to fight that off. For and that it's, you know, the milk itself turns into acid. Mm -hmm. And if it's orange juice or apple juice, things like that, they're gonna turn into acid too. It doesn't matter really what's in the bottle. And, uh, that is acid, then the bacteria overload, the bacteria produce acids, and those acids all together overwhelm what, what's going on in the mouth, and that's when the enamel starts to break down, mm -hmm. and then you have what's called a cavity, just yeah. a hole in the tooth. What about older kids? We talked a little bit about some of their snacks. Um, what, how do, I mean, because like fruit roll-ups or different types of sticky, sweet stuff, is there anything else we should be watching out for? Is it just sugar? Are there other things? What about salty stuff like chips? Does that impact their oral health? <laughs> God bless you. It's, uh, the, um, the, as far as the salt and that, I mean, again, mm. that's overall, you know, concern about the body um, and the health. When we, when we look at the, you know, juvenile diabetes and juvenile obesity and the children and that, you look at the whole diet, it's important. And so when we look at Mainly there are a couple different things we have to think about. One is that how much sugar, how many acids and all that are insulting the, the I mouth I see kids walking day. around with a bag of chips. Sure. Like se seven and eight-year-olds that have, for an hour or two, just holding a bag of chips. Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, if you got chips, you got some on a plate and you went over and we watched TV while we were eating them, but you ate that and then you were done. You didn't just walk around pulling the bag of chips mm -hmm. with you. Does that, having food in their mouth for hours right. and hours? Is that impacting their The teeth? initial damage is done within the first 20 minutes after you eat something like that mm -hmm. or drink. And so if it's constant like mm -hmm. that, and that's a very good point that you brought up because it's the same thing with sippy cups and with little juice boxes. Mm -hmm. Now if you and I wanted to have a glass of apple juice, go to the refrigerator, pour it in a glass, boom, drown, and drink it and you're done. But if you are a busy mom and you're making six stops, picking up children, dropping them off, and you have the little three or five year old in the back mm -hmm. for an hour and a half sucking on a straw, constantly, constantly bathing these teeth, it's the same as the chips. Yeah. And, and chips, and that's one other thing, is the chips are something that, you know how they stick into your teeth and they just stay in your mm -hmm. mouth. So when you're looking at snacks, you need to look at snacks that you chew up and boom, it's down right away and it's and gone. Done. Healthy Smiles is part of a campaign that's going on throughout Orange County called Rethink Your Drink. And it applies to us adults mm. as well as children. And it has to do with really understanding juices are not good. Water is the number one choice. Part of our display on our educational activities when we go out in our mobile, we'll show a 16 ounce soda and then we have individual packets that show 12 teaspoons of sugar that go in that. It's very visually exciting for children yeah. and adults. But part of what we're trying to do is encourage people to not choose soda. If you do drink soda or juice, be sure and do a wash afterwards with water if you can't brush your teeth. And oh, I learned, after drinking a soda, don't brush your teeth right away because really? that makes the enamel damage worse. It's like that for a non clinician. Your, you're like brushing your teeth with it. With exactly. Acid, right. With yeah. acid. Oh, yeah. wow. So that's where brushing comes in. Twice a day, three times a day would be better. Mm -hmm. And two minutes each time. Two minutes each time. So the time and, and how you brush is very important. Um, and you were saying there's a certain age that we should start letting our kids brush their own teeth. I've never heard this before. It's around eight years old. Eight years old. They should have the dexterity and the attention span. And, and I will give you the yes, boys are not quite <laughs> as mature as girls. 15 for boys. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you're right. It Eight is an age. Eight years old. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's quite a bit older than I would have thought. Um, 
And that I, doesn't mean you have to brush them for them. They're part of that process. This is okay. a learning process. But you're there to check and to make sure that, okay, sweetheart, let's get this back teeth a little bit further. I see. You know, and, and, and it's, it's a supervisory. So they could, they could brush a little bit, and then you could go over the fine exactly. details. And exactly. So, so it's no more sit, kind of sitting in the living room and saying, go brush your teeth. Did you brush your teeth? You no, kind no, of need, no. to need to be there and oversee it and make sure they're doing it, which actually saves us money in the long run yeah. it, with with ha with uh, cavities and, and different things that we would have to pay later. If you try to think of it as a fun activity, go in. We give out, as part of the things we give out, is a little two-minute egg timer. Mm -hmm. You turn that egg timer on and you try to brush your teeth. Most adults I know I do not that. brush their teeth mm -hmm. for two minutes. And, and that's an important thing. And we're not saying, you're not going to cut out sweets all the time. Just avoid the gooey, gummy caramel, the hard candies that can damage your teeth. Chocolate, my favorite, mm -hmm. is actually a very good alternative because it's got a lower melting temperature. So it melts off the teeth and it doesn't stay stuck. So an oh, okay. M&M's is better than a caramel. Than something that would mm -hmm. stick, mm -hmm. that would need to boil off your exactly. teeth. <laughs> 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 or chips or something that mm -hmm. would stay in there. Exactly. So it's really, um, it, it really is just really th rethinking the way we've thought about our children and their dental health and kind of starting over. Exactly. One of the things that I love about our Healthy Smiles uh, uh, clinic is that uh, we actually have a kitchen in there. And part of the educational process is to bring families in and to teach moms. You know, this is a good snack. This is a bad snack. We mm -hmm. should be preparing this for our children. And it's amazing to watch the moms. It's like a light bulb goes off in yeah. their minds, and they go, well, I guess you're really right, you know? Right. What I've been giving them is really not the best. And it's, it's just like you said, Liz. It's, um, it's easy. It's pacifying. We know they need food. But in the long run, or even the short run, it's so damaging for them to have food in their mouth all day long. Exactly. And foods that are full of sugars and, and things that are decaying their teeth. And the message really from Healthy Smiles' perspective is about the prevention and the education piece. Yes, we treat children, but what we're really trying to do, we go out and we educate between 15 and 20,000 parents and children every year. Wow. We have uh, the ability to expand because of this second mobile. Mm -hmm. We're anticipating seeing about an additional 6,000 children. And the message we're trying to get out is you want to set good habits for your child. But if mom and dad don't know and don't understand, how can they possibly be a model for their children? Mm -hmm. So we're trying to encourage people to come and learn and understand so that they can improve and we can get ourselves out of this epidemic. How do we rate with the rest of the world in America? I always thought we had the best teeth here. Orange County? Or, yeah, how are we here? Orange County, when we look at the statistics, is worse off than the state of California. What? And the nation average, national average. How can that be? It shocks everybody. We were shocked when, when they did the survey. And, that and is this. shocking. It, it is absolutely terrible. And with the Affordable Air Care Act coming out, it's wonderful because more people will have access. Mm -hmm. But there's an issue about providers. And so it's very important for children and parents now as they're signing up to make sure that they get on if they can mm -hmm. and if they can't for some reason to call our toll-free our number mm -hmm. and get a referral mm -hmm. because we want to get parents hooked up with the right providers that they can with people that can work with either their insurance or their lack of insurance or whatever wherever they're at exactly and something that's close to them that's exactly. wonderful can you give that number out for us sure 714-537 Zero seven zero zero. Okay, and uh, we have that right there on the screen. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, I've learned so much about um, oral health, and, and it really made me rethink a lot of things. I've, I've known from a nutritional standpoint that you wouldn't want to be snacking all day long. If I do that, the scale starts <laughs> going up. But I never thought about how damaging that could be for our oral care, which is so important for every other part of our body. Right. Um, thank you for all that you're doing. And um, can you give the number one more time? I want to make sure that everybody gets this because I know this is so important. Go ahead. 714-537-0700. And that number, the number on your screen right now, um, you can find out more information. You can get a referral. You can get a referral and to a physician. We can tell you about community outreach events, where you can see fantastic. the mobile out in the community. And where, when the mobile will be in your community. Thank you so much for being here. We'll see you next time. Come back real soon. I'm Reba Tony. This is Join Our Town. We'll catch you next time. This program has been sponsored by the Trinity Broadcasting Network and made possible by your telethon dollars. Your continual support can keep Join Our Town brought to your home every day. So write Join Our Town, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711.